Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today is going to be a small oil. It's not going to be so much of a great tutorial. It's more about me having a little play around and a bit of a chat with you guys and airing some feelings, whatever comes out. And so sit back and enjoy this. Hope it won't be too long, but uh, yeah, hope you get something from it anyway. Let's dive straight in. Right, it's going to be a very, very simple wave and I'm going to put a very high mark through here to suggest where I want the um, clouds to come and then I want to suggest my values and shapes. Now I am going to just put in a very dark shape here. The image has the, the crest right over on the edge. What I want to do is put it around about here as a shape just as a uh, mark there and then just bring it down and have some degree of something that's breaking away behind that. And then a little um, wave that's starting to create the same sort of effect but further away. And that's all our drawing is. We've got a big suggested shape here. This is bubbling up as it sort of comes here and then crests. And uh, we've got a little bit of the shoreline coming around to the wave like so and then a little bit of the pebbles right in the corner there okay that's all our drawing that's all I need to do so about chats um, I don't know I just fancied nattering and um, so to that end I don't know what I'm going to talk about but uh, I know that uh, many of us are sort of um, in well, all of us pretty much are in lockdown I know that we've got all our key workers uh, frontline staff uh, doing an amazing job out there keeping everybody safe and um, secure as best as the system will allow them to do and um, yeah I don't want to make this a morbid uh, conversation <laughs> I just sort of wanted to acknowledge the fact that, you know, we owe an awful lot to not just the NHS frontline staff, but everybody from all those people that collect our bins and make sure that all that stuff, our postal workers, so many people out there that are um, doing such a fantastic job of making sure that the world uh, and our lives continue um, as normal a pace as possible in such awful times as we've got with this um, lockdown situation in the world and it is the world I mean we know that we all know the fact that there, I don't think there is any countries out there that hasn't been touched by all of this so uh, yeah anyway I'm gonna waffle probably <laughs> <laughs> it's my normal thing I just wanted to establish some shapes and that's pretty much all the sky needs to be done and I want to come in with a fairly dark shape but it wants to be a little cooler so I'm going to use some um, burnt umber and some um, cobalt blue and a touch of zinc white just to take it off of the pure dark let's see where that goes that's quite a mild color blue or dark color and run that all the way through almost all the, well I'm going to take it all the way through there I don't think it matters like that and the nice thing is I'm using a Rosemary and Company um, dagger brush and um, they just lay on the color in fact these poor ones that I've got in my hand and on my palette right now are fast wearing out and I am just awaiting for the postman to arrive at some point with a new supply of these brushes. They've been on order a few days and I'm confident that they should be here um, in the not too distant future. So anyway, I'm digressing again. Um, always talking about painting, but that's my life. I put in that little bit of dark in here, but it's a medium dark, it's not that dark. But this is all about establishing these shapes and there's a big dark one here. I'm going to put some um, ultramarine blue into this umber. 
and it's going a little bit too brown still so I'm just taking off to one side and I'm going to come in with a little bit of zinc white mix the two up see roughly where I'm at and then come in with this big dark statement of this wave here as it's sort of coming and building up to this great big crescendo as it were up in here and then we've got um, the breakaway darts and lights accordingly of the um, spray and I'm just going to take that through there because I've got a little bit too much uh, panel left under there to do the job so I'm going to take that through and I want to put in some more pure blue taking it down a little bit with zinc white just put that in through the base of this wave like so as I say, I didn't want this painting to be over laboured. I tend to start these videos and they, with all the best intentions, I try and make them to be as fast as possible. And they end up very, very long. And I must confess that I don't ever intend or set out for that to happen. So it's the way it is. Anyway, I'm just going to suggest very quickly some little bits of foam pattern but in a heavy shadowy uh, situation or setup so that you've got suggested lovely blues in there maybe a little cobalt in there just to play around with I can come back in with a rigger or something smaller but this dagger is pretty much an all-round brush it does so many jobs and it does um, the nice thing about having a brush like this that can do so many jobs is it actually doesn't break your concentration. It just allows you to keep painting and to bring some little bit of pale blue in behind this uh, so that we can see the structure of this big wave, this big dark statement here. Just let that build up. But yeah, I think that in, in a way, and I didn't really think about this before, but in a way that... Um, you know, if you don't have to keep stopping and thinking about picking up a new brush every time you want to change what you're doing, then this brush is ideal because it just means to say that you just keep painting. There's another sort of breaking uh, wave at the back there. I want to put in a few taps of darker blue, just dabbing that in for the moment. I can play around with some of those further on. And I'm going to put one or two taps of bubbling, uh, suggested bubbling in this wave at the, in the foreground here. It's churning, it's throwing water up everywhere. I just wanted to make this as quick as I can. I, I know I keep saying that, but... <laughs> I shall still be saying this when we're about 50, 60 minutes into the painting. And I don't really want it to go that long. I just wanted this to be a little natter with you guys. And just, um, I don't know, touching base in certain ways that, uh, um, I, you know, acknowledging the fact that we're all in the same boat to many degrees. And, you know, you think, I mean, obviously some people have been severely touched by this pandemic and my heart personally goes out for all of those people whoever they are people that some people I know and many people most people of course I don't and probably never would know but they've all been touched in one way and another by it and it's very very sad what has happened um, but you know also keeping uh, the fact that we are all trying to work our way through this in whatever fashion that we find ourselves and our circumstance we're all trying to work our way through it and I personally as an artist I've had a situation where for the last I don't know since 2011 I think I've actually had my gallery in Hythe which has served me very, very well. Not only as a place to sell my paintings from, uh, but also uh, a place or a venue to which I can conduct other things like um, workshops and weekly classes for students. And I've done that for so long now. Um, 
and some of my students have been with me for many many years and I am very very grateful to not only the fact that they keep coming back for more and putting up with me it's really really cool but also for the fact that um, you know it, it's just a great camaraderie between um, students and tutor and it and these relationships have built up over many many years and you know I've had students come and go for different reasons health move whatever it may have been but many of them still call me and have a chat with me and it's wonderful uh, but that's all gone and I suppose this um, new reality that I keep hearing speaking about the new reality the new way that we'll be living in the future uh, I don't know how much I need to put into that or how much I sort of it scares me more than anything else I don't know I feel that there will be some major differences in our lives I don't think that we can go into something like this and come out exactly the same as we went in things have been altered and I hope some of them for the better but we have things have been altered and to that end we have to make the best of what will be in times to come and um, I'm losing my thread a little bit just trying to put a bit of warmth into some of these clouds before I really just punch away with the uh, bits and pieces that are going to go into it just trying to warm one or two up okay so anyway yes I forget where I was now talking about how we are doing yes and that's what I was trying to say that um, you know it's I for one am having to reinvent my uh, part of my life my the way I've been doing business uh, and the way I've been surviving as an artist it has been selling originals of course and selling prints and cards and other products um, and in that time I've written a couple of books uh, on painting put out through search press and in fact I'm working on another one right now or have been for a couple of years um, but um, so I'm having to reinvent myself because the the new so-called reality is going to change for me personally what I can and can't do in my gallery I can't teach closely to anybody anymore I can't get up over somebody's shoulders sit down beside them and um, help them with their work not in a direct manner because social distancing irrespective of, of lockdown rules and the way that we can start living our lives more in the open in the future they're still going to affect uh, things like lockdown and uh, not lockdown in distancing and to that end I can't f feel that I can function in the same way that I once did and that's really quite sad um, but I understand it you know I mean the last thing we want as a as in the world is a second spike of this horrible disease and um, you know it has to be contained it has to be knocked on the head once and for all even though I'm hearing that we've got to live with it possibly for years I hope that certainly is um, a bit of scaremongering and nothing more um, but all that said and done um, I don't think that I can physically teach in my gallery anymore or not for a very long time to come and I have to therefore consider how I'm going to address my future as a painter and one of the things I'm really glad that I started my channel on YouTube well I have had it for over nine years but I've never done anything with it really as such until the last almost a year now uh, in the back end of uh, July last year I started to um, in earnest really apply myself to creating content on my channel and um, I am so glad that I took that decision because it's now meant to say that in the current climate uh, the way things are I have had a situation where 
I'm a little bit ahead of that game. I have been able to get on and excuse me, uh, get on and create work and start talking to other people and um, yeah, just just have uh, a little leg up as it were. And to that end, I am very very grateful. I took that decision. Uh, I know for many they're already doing an awful lot on their painting channels and having quite a successful career um, and they took their decisions to do so uh, a number of years before I did and so I'm coming to it fairly late I suppose but I don't think that um, it's ever too late uh, I'd rather be late now than to turn around a year from now and think oh I wish I'd done it last year uh, there's still part of me that wishes I'd done it several years before but I can't change that so I'm sort of working on the fact that I'm doing it now and uh, that's fantastic I'm not sure how um, yeah we're sort of 20 minutes nearly I think okay so now um, I've really set the scene, it's pretty much sorted out. I just want to poke around in a couple of little taps of information that suggest that there is um, information on a far coastline right over there. Just one or two taps of different bits and pieces as you go around the coastal bay where I live and just suggest odd little shapes of trees and buildings way off in the background there just gives this whole thing a sense of scale and depth and that's all that needed just a few taps and your brain will do the rest I don't need to do anything else to that now I'm going to take this dark value right out for the moment just clean this palette up for here and get rid of that and some more paper yeah um, I've lost it now <laughs> I was talking can't remember what I was saying um, my concentration levels can't switch too quickly. I'm going to use some um, titanium white and I'm going to put in a little bit of um, thixotropic or impasto liquid to give me a fairly bright orangey ready color to start with. Coming in here and just pinking it up a bit more than I had it and to begin with I just want to put in a couple of marks like so it's going to pick up all that paint underneath but don't worry too much it's just a mark to begin with and we can improve upon that moving forward there is also a very similar mark down in here which I want to put in and a few crusty bits along here on the top of this wave like so we're just getting a you know, just getting the base parts of this in place and I'm going to mix it up right the way through there and it's picking up these bluey colors but that's great because I want it to show up a little bit and in fact I'm definitely going to put in a little bit of a another value in here so it's just picking up some of those uh, bits as it splashes its way towards the shoreline and I'm just going to use the tip of this brush to mess some of these up and suggest a little bit of spray so the information becomes lost I can come back in and add some of this splash material further in but for the time being I just almost want to tap into and move these shapes around like so like that take it out take it along bring it back into here in fact, it does need to be a bit warmer. Not maybe that warm. Take some material to one side and let's come back in with some lovely pinky values in here. As that sort of pushes its way on towards the shore. And one or two marks in here. Just general marks. Nothing too detailed this is not a detailed painting this is a feeling this is a piece of the moment this is um, transient um, you know it's just merely what it is I put in a line of light through that wave there 
Let's suggest a few undulations in that so that it does not appear to be one crashing line. And one or two little white heads, or we call them white horses when I was a kid. My father used to, we used to go out every, pretty well, weather permitting, we went out every Sunday in the boat uh, along these shores. And uh, we had a, um, an amazing time uh, fishing as a kiddie. And um, yeah, I loved it. And I was always out with my father in the boat, as I say. And it was only a small wooden clinker built boat uh, fishing boat and uh, for inshore use and um, part of a club there's a camaraderie there with members and other like-minded people and um, yeah that's what it was all about and I just had those very very fond memories as a kid and um, so this really is just a lovely feeling I just want to put in the wind is gusting through here on this particular day just absolutely um, throwing up against it's coming hard out the west and pushing the uh, wave everywhere as it were I just wanted to suggest that movement in this wave and it's sort of just creating so much difference in what we see Okay, I hopefully this is coming off. I'm going to change the rigger to a small, slightly smaller, uh, long filbert. I'm going to come in with a bit more yellow and some more white, mix it into some of this material, and just change the value of the white and just come back in in one or two places. It's a little bit too wet. Take that back. Just tapping around and just making one or two extra marks. A little strong mark in there for that part. And um, one or two in here. Then I'm going to jump over to the rigger very, very quickly. As I say, f um, yeah, I was talking about reinventing myself as such. And yeah, we're all having to do this in one way or another. Um, even um, those of us uh, who are on the front line, their way of doing things has had to drastically alter. And um, But from my own personal point of view, um, as an art teacher as well as an artist, uh, I've, I sort of work not in schools or anything like that I'm not a certificated teacher in that regard um, my teaching is born of um, uh, 30 odd 40 years uh, not 40 but 30 odd years as a professional and um, many more years before that uh, learning my craft as it were so yeah um, whereas it's always been pretty much um, set up as the studio and the gallery in Hythe but now it's a case of that doesn't work anymore or probably won't work anymore not in the same way it's going to have to alter and to that end I'm doing so much more online and that's what I was saying I'm so pleased that I started this process uh, almost a year ago we are almost at the point where we ha are um, able to be monetized as a channel and um, I'm doing a lot of live streams now each week two live streams a week on a um, Monday evening and on a Friday evening to those who wish to tune in and join me as I paint something um, but yeah um, it's just a great experience to be able to connect with people in this way and I think one of the biggest things that I've learned from doing uh, my channel over this last year is that instead of just teaching um, sort of 30 odd people a week it's just great that I can actually reach out to so many more people around the world on a very very regular and very very easy way um, and so yeah I um 
I really appreciate that ability to be able to do that and um, long may that continue but I think that really is for me the, the way that my my painting as a teacher certainly and also online sales they have been increasing um, quite a at quite a rate lately uh, I've got to say uh, some of it is because we've been putting out a lot of temporary offers sort of reduced price paintings as it were uh, to capture and stimulate people into buying art um, whilst in lockdown and that's worked out very very well not just for me but for many artists um, and not just in England but around the world too so I'm very very grateful for that uh, as one thing but uh, also for the fact that um, the teaching is, is just going to go this way for me I think in the future I uh, I just love the ability to connect with people in this way and I think that's really what um, I'm trying to convey also I've got my patreon channel you know I've been developing that too it's a little bit slow off the mark it is happening I am adding to my patreon um, content all the time you know I'm not I, I know I've got sort of suggested things that you know it's so many a month and this and that sort of thing but if I get the time I'll add extra content into that and I won't worry the fact that you know it's I've got to wait another week because the end of the month therefore I can't put another video up yet I just keep adding as and when I've got the content I'll put it up but I'm not just doing it for the sake of doing it I'm not just doing it for um, uh, you know I just want to put something out there therefore I put any old rubbish out that's not what it's about it has to be quality content or there really is just no need to do it at all I don't see the point in wasting people's valuable time asking them to watch something that is just not up to snuff and I from that point of view hopefully pride myself in giving something of some degree of value to people and and all those uh, channels out there teaching you to paint art do just that they do a fantastic job of giving you some quality content that you can learn from moving forward with your endeavors so I am just sort of hopefully following suit to a point okay I'm pretty much sure that that's all I'm going to be doing on this little painting I just wanted to put in a few subtle bluey colors I picked up the wrong blue so I'm going to come out of there pick up a little bit of uh, white and just put a few watery trails and suggest a couple of marks in here which are bits of foam trails being left by one of the waves that have gone ahead of this one that's currently building and a few sort of shadowy ones coming down the face of the wave did I say cloud <laughs> it's early in the morning <laughs> forgive me <laughs> I meant wave you know what I meant anyway right so we're gonna we're coming to the end of this anyway and um, I've enjoyed the little natter albeit the threads have been all over the show um, but hopefully you've got something from this anyway um, and if you do and you have enjoyed this little um, video uh, when it actually gets released uh, which will be on Friday then put the comments about it just let me know that you know uh, you've actually enjoyed this process um, whereby we do some work and there's a little bit of a natter and uh, yeah it doesn't have to be all about just the actual painting it can be so many other things this part of it though wherever I sort of whatever part I'm doing on here it doesn't have to be so that you can put as much or as little as you want to into this part I'm just um, putting a few patterns in a few shapes of lighter paler blues cooler blues as they are in the shadow at this point they're shadowed from the light over here on this one and you can use them as directional lines as they come up the beach and sort of caress the stones in the foreground big thick lump of paint there and get rid of that they're gonna nothing wrong with it but it will take probably about 45 years to dry <laughs> so I get rid of that out of the way 
um, and just put that in there like so and just a little bit of lovely light just popping out through there just to finish that off as that taps off onto the shoreline one or two little lightish marks uh, glistening on the stones uh, from that lovely sun just very quickly and I think we're done okay well I mean you can always do more um, but I just wanted to have a little natter and not make this video that long so I do hope that you've got something from it and while I'm sort of just signing this off and finishing it um, don't forget my um, live streams every Monday and every Friday and that is a uh, British time of 7 p.m. which I think for a lot of uh, Americans uh, that watch me um, that's sort of just into the afternoon for them so hopefully it's at a time when you can enjoy it and um, yeah and get something from it so don't forget those Monday and Friday every week at uh, 7 p.m. And on top of that, this type of video, these videos that I do, whether it's a full tutorial or indeed um, just something like this, a little natter, is every Friday without fail. Has been for the last year, so I hopefully that will continue in that way. And um, yeah, join me. Um, and also don't forget my Patreon. My Patreon page is, all the details are at the bottom of this um, video in the details section below and take a look at it because you might find that there's something in there that you really fancy getting involved with there are lots of tiers lots of levels that you can do it on so you know have a look at it and you'll be so welcome and there are extra streams on a Sunday as well as content being added all the time so take a look at it I hope to see you there and um, yeah I'm going to call it a day. Thanks very much for watching and putting up with my rambling. And uh, catch you all in the next video next week. All the best for now, guys. Take care. Stay safe. Happy painting. Catch you all soon. Bye-bye.